Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is Michael Seeley. The topic for this week, I think, is a really important one. It's about career planning. Athletes, very frequently, I see this way too much, do not plan out their careers. They have a lot of talent. They're getting great results. They may have even turned professional, or they're about to, or they know that they're at least going to pursue their sport at a level where they're going to be making some money at it. And so many athletes do not look at their sport like a job. They're still kind of treating it like a hobby, kind of winging it, and not really having a long-term plan or long-term vision or long-term goal for their sport. So I think this really is an important topic. It's really not talked about enough. And so I want to talk about starting really first of all with my own story. Um, So a lot of you know that I was a bicycle racer. I pursued it pretty seriously from kind of like high end of high school till about age 24, 25. And when I look back at it, you know, I I did make this executive decision that I was not going to go to college. I was going to pursue bike racing and do it really seriously. I was making a little bit of money at it, but I, you know, in retrospect, I really didn't have a plan. All I said to myself was, you know, if I don't make it, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to give myself, you know, X amount of time, which I think is generally a good idea. But what I didn't do is I didn't articulate enough exactly the metrics that I wanted to achieve to know that I was on track. It was 1992 was the year I did the Olympic trials. And my idea in my mind was this was an ultimatum for me that I wanted to either become professional or get you know really serious about the sport, really, really commit to it. And this was going to be the test. And I didn't get the results I wanted. It was a pretty tough race. And I said to myself, well, that's it. You know, I'm going to college the next year. And that's basically what I did. But the problem here with that plan is that it's really not articulated over a long haul. I should have made a plan basically at age 18 where I said, here's the trajectory that I want in my career. And so many athletes do not do that. The younger you can do it, the better. The story that really inspires me is um, Greg LeMond, the great American cyclist. When he was 19 years old, at least this is the story I remember, he made this plan for his entire career. He wrote it down on paper and it was this very bold plan of what he wanted to accomplish, the age he wanted to accomplish certain goals. So this story inspires me, and he was thinking really long term. You know, when he was racing, he had a bicycle company. So he was really thinking more long term career. And um, I think this is really important, no matter what level you are at your sport. Uh, if, if you're thinking, if you're entertaining the idea of, Uh, becoming professional, making money at your sport, you need to treat it really seriously. Sit down, literally write out a five or even a 10-year plan. I think a 10-year plan is better. This makes a lot of sense. People who have professional careers, doctors, lawyers, etc., they all have, at least hopefully, a long-term career plan. Like, this is what I want to be doing long-term. I want to have my own business or I want to have you know, be making X amount of money, or this is my specialty. You need to do this also as an athlete. And the younger you can do it, the better. The sooner you can do it, the better. It's not too late. If you haven't made a plan, and don't feel bad about it, but I would say make a five or 10 year plan. Write down exactly what you want to accomplish and when. Now, a lot of athletes shy away from this because they don't want to be disappointed. They don't want to be let down. They want to be more flexible. Well, what if I don't do this? That's okay if you don't achieve your goal, but at very least, you have a roadmap. You have a vision ahead so that when you are experiencing a low point during the season, at least you know what your plan is ahead, your vision ahead. If you don't have that long-term plan or vision, you can get caught up in in kind of worst case scenario thinking you might have a couple of bad competitions or games and you go, ah, you know, that's it. I'm going to quit. Or I don't know, maybe I should kind of dial it back next year, kind of phase things out. This wishy-washy non-planning. If you had actually mapped out a plan on paper, really articulated exactly what you want to accomplish. If you're having a low point, you say, oh, right, that's my commitment to myself for the next you know, three to five years or whatever your plan is, 
you're committed to it. So I highly encourage you to do this. Um, you know, a lot of athletes right now, uh, the, the big, big names like uh, LeBron James or Cristiano Ronaldo, they started thinking about um, their post-retirement or their post-career, you know, retirement plans while they were still playing. Like LeBron James has this great charity in Akron, Ohio. He gives back to his community. So does Cristiano Ronaldo and this um, Kevin Love, Michael Phelps. All these big, big names, they have these charities. They have, you know, while they were playing, they had plans for what they're going to be doing after their sport. I would encourage you even to do that. Like map out everything you're going to be doing in your sport and even after. Uh, I think that's really important to have that long-term plan. Again, it, it gives you this sort of this solid feeling when you're caught up in the in the battle and being a warrior out there in your sport that you know, oh, this is what I'm going to be doing next year and the next year and the next year. Like treat your sport more like a career job and do things like networking. Don't just get results. That's important, of course, too, but we all know that you can get contracts and you can get money even if you're not the best. Sometimes personality wins too. So that means have social media. Be really serious about that. Maybe have somebody manage it because you are your own brand. You are your, your brand. That's, that, that's it. So you got to have like hire a photographer, get some good photos of yourself doing your sport, promote yourself, leverage that. Maybe uh, get a clothing line. Maybe partner up with local athletic um, you know, stores and do speeches and things like this. Like leverage everything that you have achieved. You know, people look up to you and really monetize that. Um, you know, some uh, athletes get agents. If that's helpful for you, I, I would suggest that if you're not great at self-promotion. But the more comfortable you can get thinking about yourself as a brand, as your own company, really, the better you're going to be getting, um, you're, you're going to be getting better results, put it that way. Because again, there's this, this feeling of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm committed, Here's, this is my job, I'm doing it for X amount of time. So take your sport more seriously. If you're still doing it as a hobby, and you got talent, and you're getting good results, do some of these things that I'm suggesting. Now, if you need help making a five-year plan or a 10-year plan, this is something I do with the athletes I coach, and it really helps them get clear on the direction in which they're going. So I hope this podcast helped you today. Please share this. There's another podcast I did last week with uh, Tom Schuler, a great American cyclist, and he is a great example of somebody who basically transitioned seamlessly from his cycling career now into race promotion and his own company. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for listening. This is Michael Seeley's Sports Psychology Podcast. Tune in again next week.